This is going to be a study on de-evolution. Many overly educated people believe that there is no such thing as God and that we have evolved. They also believe that things are going to get better and better. But the Bible teaches the exact opposite. Throughout the Bible, it shows a de-evolution rather than evolution. It shows things getting worse instead of getting better. Things have to get worse and worse before they get better in the coming millennial kingdom and eternity. And even when things do get better, like the Bible says, knowledge shall be increased. A lot of the knowledge that we're getting isn't good. Uh, men are getting so smart that their knowledge is puffing them up and they think they can do things without God. But the first thing we want to see is Man is waxing worse and worse. Second Timothy 3.13 says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Today, men are getting more wicked by the day. You have abortions, Planned Parenthood, human trafficking, all of these mass shootings. Paul calls this world a present evil world. And he said that back then, and it is way worse today than it was then. And this is why God doesn't want man to live forever in his sinful state. And that is why he put a cherubim to guard the way of the tree of life so man wouldn't partake of the tree and live forever. Today men are trying to live, through, live forever through technology. And men in the transhumanism movement are trying to make themselves immortal. They want to live forever without God and they want to live without a final authority. They want their self to be the authority. A man isn't getting better, they're getting worse. A man didn't start out as a sinner with a sin nature. Adam and Eve started out as sinless beings in the garden. And sometimes people forget that Adam lived well over 900 years old. But people today are lucky to live 70 or 80 years. And this doesn't seem like we are getting better to me. You can see a decrease in age before you even make it through reading the book of Genesis. And man will continue to get more evil as time passes. People are only out for their own pleasures and they are all seeking their own. In the time of Jacob's trouble there will be so much iniquity that the love of many will wax cold. So our love for others is decreasing. It's getting worse. Matthew twenty four twelve says, And because iniquity shall abound... The love of many shall wax cold. Christians in the last days will have hearing loss. In that they won't want to hear the words of God anymore. They won't want doctrine, correction, reproof, and instruction in righteousness. 2 Timothy 4.3 says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. People are so deceived by Satan and blinded by his tricks and our eyes aren't getting better, they are getting worse. 1 John 2.11 says, But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. And most people have no discernment. They are unable to see with their eyes what is right from wrong, and they are blinded to the truth of the gospel. The mouth of man won't get better. It's getting worse. In the last days you will have more blasphemy and more mockers. Jude 1.18 says how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. The Antichrist will be considered a superman, yet he will blaspheme God with his mouth. Revelation 13.6 says, And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Everything about your body has devolved from what Adam was when he was in the image of God. Man's countenance, tongue, hands, heart, and feet are all wicked and all on a downfall. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19 says, These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. That's what man's hands are doing so often today is shedding innocent blood. And heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Men's hearts are getting worse. Feed that be swift in running to mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies. And he that soweth discord among brethren. 
Even the throat of man has devolved. Do you think God would have described Adam's throat like it does in Psalms 5, 9, where it says, For there is no faithfulness in their mouth, their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher, they flatter with their tongue. Before the fall, God wouldn't have said that about Adam. Romans 3.13, their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips. Man isn't getting worse. He's, man's getting worse. He's not getting better. And in Genesis 1.27, God made Adam in the image of God. Adam sinned and lost that image. And now man is in the image of Adam. At least until they're born again. And God has a way for men to get better. And that's only through believing the gospel and getting saved. And without this, you will continue to devolve. And even if you do get saved, your flesh is still not going to get better. You'll continue to get older and older and sicker and in worse health than you were. And even one day, possibly, if you're not saved... You may devolve into a red worm. And this brings us to our next point. Men in the lake of fire devolve. If you believe the Bible, then you believe born again believers will one day get a new body like Jesus Christ. And it isn't too far fetched for me to believe that the devil's children would get a body similar to his body. Jesus Christ describes the lake of fire as a place where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. The Bible even says man is a worm. Job 25, 6, how much less man that is a worm and the son of man which is a worm. Isaiah 41, 14, fear not thou worm Jacob. So Jacob is called a worm. Jesus Christ became sin for us on the cross. And this is a prophecy about the Lord Jesus Christ in the book of Psalms. It says in chapter 22 and verse 6, but I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despise of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head, saying, He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. When Jesus Christ became sin for us on the cross, it describes him as a worm. And these, uh, this self-proclaimed new independent fundamental Baptist guys will call people a psycho for considering or speculating that men get a body like a worm in the lake of fire. Yet they will teach as absolute doctrine that Jesus burned in hell for the three days and three nights that he was in the heart of the earth. It sounds like they're the one with the problem. Because I'm not teaching this as an, an absolute fact. It just seems like the scriptures could be teaching this. And looking at Isaiah 66, it seems that the worm is describing the carcasses of the people in the lake of fire. Isaiah 66, 24 says, And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me, for their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring into all flesh. Many people say this is the their conscience. The worm is their conscience or memory or regret. And I believe you're going to have memory and all that stuff in hell, but I just don't believe that's what the worm is. But it seems that when men are cast into the lake of fire in the millennium or white throne judgment, they will devolve into a worm and get a body like their father, the devil, who is a serpent and a great red dragon. Once again, I'm not saying this as absolute fact, but either way, man went from having pleasure in a garden to a literal lake of fire. And that is de-evolution, whether they get the body of a worm or not. But number three, we see angels devolve. The angels were created with more power than man and were deceived by Satan. And many of them have already fell and you will see more fall in the future. Can you believe that after seeing all the events and the 6,000 years of history take place and seeing how God's worked in the Bible and have sit with God and seen him on his throne? There's still more of them that's going to fall. Revelation 12, 4 says, And his tail, talking about Satan, drew the third part of the stars of heaven, that's the angels, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And then 1 Corinthians 6, 3 says, Know ye not that we shall judge angels? So angels went from being sinless beings 
to many of them falling and one day being judged by born again believers. It sounds like things get worse instead of getting better. And the angels left their first estate and went after the daughters of men in Genesis 6 4. You would think angels that were getting better and better would know not to commit fornication and go after strange flesh. And in Job 38, it talks about the morning star singing together and all the sons of God shouting for joy. They went from giving praises to God to being reserved in everlasting chains under darkness. It's crazy that many of those angels back then were singing to God in Job 38 would be burning in the lake of fire. And 2 Peter 2, 4 says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Satan wasn't an angel. He was the anointed cherub. But as you know, he didn't get better, but rather got worse. And Satan continues to fall until he winds up in the lake of fire with the Antichrist and false prophet. But number four, we see animals haven't evolved. They have devolved. If you look at Genesis 126, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. God created man to have dominion over the animals. Adam could walk with a tiger and it wouldn't bite him or eat him. And dogs weren't the only ones who were man's best friend. A man could have a pet lion. And the lion could be man's best friend. But even after the flood, when it wasn't like it was with Adam, the animals were still fearful of man. As it says in Genesis 9-2, But animals die off and become extinct, and in the time of Jacob's trouble, they will be used to kill people. Revelation 6-8 says, And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sit on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. So, animals aren't getting better, they're getting worse. In the time of Jacob's trouble, people will be killed with the beasts of the earth. And then, number five, the earth itself is cursed and getting worse. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. That's Genesis 1.1. And Isaiah 45 says he formed it to be inhabited. God made the earth a perfect place. It went from a paradise to being a sin-cursed world. After the fall, this is what God said to Adam in Genesis 3.17. It says, And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Genesis 3.18 Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, to thee and thou shalt eat, it, eat the herb of the field. Then the earth gets hit with Noah's flood. Man is supposedly destroying the earth as the days go by. One day God is going to destroy the earth completely. The earth isn't getting any younger, it is getting older. Look at Isaiah 51, 6. It says, Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment. And they that dwell therein shall die in like manner, but my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Does that look like people and the earth or any of this creation is getting better? No, it's getting worse. At the second coming, the Bible says in Isaiah 24, 20, the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. The earth doesn't get better, it gets worse. The sun, moon, and stars get worse. They were made to give light, but in the time of Jacob's trouble, the sun is darkened and the moon is turned into blood. A star called Wormwood falls to the earth, and literal stars that fall or supposedly burn out are representations of fallen angels that are also called stars in the Bible. So everything you can't see, like angels, is represented by something you can see, like stars. And number six, we see that material things devolve. We gain a lot of material possessions in this life. We have cars, houses, watches, jewelry, and we're blessed beyond belief with material items. These things follow the pattern of everything else. My car doesn't get less miles, it gets more miles. It doesn't get shinier, it starts to chip, and the sun fades the paint. 
the siding falls off of my house and you start having to do repairs on your house. Your watch will stop ticking. Uh, these things don't get better, they get worse. These things get corrupted. Matthew 6, 19 says, Lay not up for yourself treasures on, upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. These material things become idols, and these idols can't save you in the day of trouble. They can't turn into a God that can see, hear, and walk and help you. Rather, they rust and eventually get destroyed. You can, you can see examples of this in Scripture. Leviticus 26.30 says, And I will destroy your high places, and cut down your images, and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols. And my soul shall abhor you. Isaiah 2.18 says, And the idols he shall utterly abolish. Isaiah 2.20 In that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made each one for himself to worship to the moles and to the bats. When Jesus comes back on a white horse, men will throw their idols to the moles and bats. These material things don't save. They don't get better. They just get worse, and they're going to eventually be destroyed. And number seven, we see things get worse, but it does get better eventually. Our bodies will be better. If you are a born-again believer, then you will get a new body at the rapture. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 55 says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory, or death, where is thy sting, O grave, where is thy victory? We will no longer be walking around in a dead corpse, but rather in a glorified body, a body that will never grow old and die. And not only this, but there will be a new heaven and new, a new earth. Revelation 21 1 says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And there will be a perfect king on the throne. You won't have to worry about corrupt government. Jesus Christ will be the perfect king. Revelation 19 15 says, And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Jesus Christ is going to get rid of the alcohol, the drugs, the fornication, the gambling, the casinos. There won't be no such things as plant, Planned Parenthood and abortion. And matter of fact, they're going to be having so many babies born in eternity that men who still have natural bodies will populate the planets. Isaiah 9-7 says of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom to order it, and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And also the animals get better. Isaiah eleven six says, The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. So things have to get worse before they get better. And if you would like to see things get better, then you need to make sure you are born again. And the only way to get born again is by believing the gospel. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. The Gospel is this, Jesus died, He died for you, He was buried, and He rose again the third day. Jesus died for you because you are a sinner. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Jesus died for you because He doesn't want you to go to hell fire. Hell is where you go if you don't accept Jesus Christ as the payment for all those horrible sins you've done. Jesus Christ died by shedding his blood. Colossians 1.14 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. If you want to be saved and born again, then you need to believe this gospel. You need to come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner, knowing you deserve hell, and simply put your trust in what Jesus did on the cross to pay for your sins. 
Jesus Christ died, he died for you, he was buried, and he resurrected. Quit relying on your own good deeds to save yourself. You can't make it to heaven by being a good person or by water baptism or by joining a church or by quitting a certain sin. You are saved when you put your trust in the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We aren't saved by asking to be saved or by praying a prayer. Although if that's what you want to do, then do it. Many people are coming out and saying, if you pray a prayer, period, you didn't get saved. You are saved by believing the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection as a payment for your sin. If you have believed the gospel and pray a prayer, asking Jesus Christ to be your payment for sin, you were saved before the words even came out of your mouth. How could you have prayed that what you just prayed if you hadn't already believed it in your heart? I don't see a problem with you saying a prayer if that's what you feel like you need to do. But remember, the prayer is just outward evidence of what took place in your heart. Salvation comes from believing the gospel. But I hope you will believe the gospel and place your faith in Jesus Christ and Him alone to take away your sins.